With Spreadsheet.com, you can automate repetitive work and integrate with other popular work tools using automations. Automations in Spreadsheet.com can be created by anyone. You don't need to know how to write code or create complicated scripts. For example, here we have a product launch plan spreadsheet that's shared with a team. Each row on the table region represents a task with a start date, end date, status, owner, and more. Now let's build some automations to make sure the project runs smoothly. So we'll click on the robot icon in the header to open the automations dialog for this workbook. Here you'll be taken into a library of ready-to-go recipes you can use to quickly build automations. At the top right, you'll see a drop-down showing all of the worksheets in your workbook. Each worksheet in your workbook can have its own set of automations defined. So let's say we'd like to set up an automation on our tasks worksheet to remind teammates whenever they have a task starting soon. Looking at recipes involving dates, here's a recipe that looks like it will work for sending reminders to users. So we click the Add to Worksheet button to add it to our tasks worksheet. And this takes us into the visual automation editor. Each automation always has a trigger block and at least one action block. The trigger block determines what triggers the automation to run. In this case, we want our automation to be triggered at 8 a.m., two days before each task's start date. So we click the on variable, and instead of same day, we choose a custom time and change it from one day to two days. At this point, if we try to save the automation, we'll get validation errors because we haven't fully configured it yet. Spreadsheet.com checks each automation before saving it to make sure it's valid. All invalid variables will be highlighted in red, and hovering over, a warning message will explain what's missing. Here, we need to specify a date column to use for the trigger. So we select Start Date, and choose 8 a.m. for the time. Now we need to configure the notification that gets sent and who it gets sent to. This happens in the Action block. Here we want to send a notification to whoever is assigned as the task owner. So we'll select the user variable and choose the owner column. Now we click the notification variable to define the message we want to send. This opens the message dialog where we need to define a subject and a message body. In these areas, we can use a left bracket character or the plus buttons on the right to insert column values within the message. We can also optionally choose to include a link to the row within the message. So now we could move forward with this automation as is, but conditional logic makes automations much more powerful. Hover over the connector, click plus, and add a condition block. You'll notice the automation automatically expands and you now have two action blocks, one for when the conditions are met and another for when they are not met. Here we'll add a filter condition to only send our notification if the task's status is not started. As you use the automation editor, you'll notice you have the ability to add as many branches to your automations as you want. As a workflow gets bigger, you can easily move around by clicking and dragging, and zoom in and out with the mouse wheel, trackpad, or the zoom buttons at the top left. All right, so our automation looks ready to go, but before we save it and put it into production, it's usually a good idea to do a test run to make sure it works as expected. Clicking the Test Run button allows you to choose a row to run the automation on. Select a row and click Run. And now we can see a test run log appear that we can expand to review. We can see the message was sent and it appears in our email as expected with a link to the row. As your automations grow, sometimes it's helpful to give custom names to each block. This makes debugging and reviewing automation run logs a lot easier. For example, we can rename this action block to Task Reminder Actions. And now when we run it, it's easier to see which path was taken. Before saving our automation, let's give it a custom name and click Save. Now let's create another automation to send a Slack message to the whole team whenever a task is completed. This time, we want our automation to trigger when our status column changes to completed. Since our status column has the select data type, all we have to do is pick the value we're looking for and then define our action. Now, in the action block, we want to send a message to Slack. So we pick the Send Slack Message action and then follow the steps to configure Slack integration. Now we can select the Slack channel we want to send the message to and then define the message. 
Before we test out our Slack automation, let's take a look at some of the other available action types. The first four action types allow us to create, update, copy, and move rows from one worksheet to another, even between different workbooks in different folders. For example, let's use the Create Row action to create a new row in our archived tasks worksheet whenever a task is completed. First, we pick the target worksheet. Then click the row variable to configure the mapping between the source and target worksheets. Now that we have multiple actions, we can choose which sequence to run them in by reordering them in the action block. Okay, so let's save this automation and try it out. Now, when we change a task to completed, we see that a new row gets created in our archived tasks worksheet. And now we can see a message come through to our team's Slack channel.